Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, we're finally doing it. We're finally getting it done. The long-awaited engine mounting. I'm gonna get the engine mounted today. I promise. If not, I'll put something on the screen like right about here. Nope, nothing. All right, I guess we did it. Stay tuned to find out how. So in the last episode, we cut and burnt and scraped and cleaned our way down to having these two little aluminum studs right here that are perfect mating piece to go into the stock uh, S85 engine mounts, right? Worked really hard on that. Today, these showed up in the mail and these you know, looked exactly like I thought they would. This is a universal engine mount made by a company, who cares, doesn't matter. Um, stock universal engine mount that you could just Google for and find online. These are often called a biscuit style engine mount. Um, so I was, the plan was is to integrate this into this by using some aluminum stud coming out of the bottom of this, welding that on and then making a hat like that out of this and then that would kind of go on there and off to the races, right? Well, one thing happened, I could not find any aluminum bolts to build an aluminum stud out of, so I couldn't find the right materials. That was one issue, but then I just got over here and I started test fitting this up against our engine mounting area right here, and it actually just fits on its own very, very well. See, the bottom surface of this has a recessed section kind of like this but this hat isn't small so small that it sets in there and then the actual bottom surface area is a pretty good um, a pretty good kind of fitting up area so it's actually looks pretty good to set in there just like it is but we need this post to come up higher because as it sits right now we won't be able to fit a nut and get the nylock thread on there so we need to make sure that we can get some thread on there we don't need to use this bottom piece of this though, so that's another thing. And this might be a little bit overkill. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of work, do a little discovery, see if what I can do is kind of take this apart a little bit and set this through even higher and make sure that we can get it on the car if we do get it in the right spot and on our mount if we get it in the right spot and see where we go from there. Okay, I figured something out. I'm super stoked on the idea. I haven't said that in a while, but uh, cause this, this is all really coming together very, very well. This just generic engine mount is like a godsend. It's basically exactly what I needed. Uh, so now we're just gonna make it work and it's working out really well. So this thing uh, was a little short and depending on how you use it, it's a little bit long. We can just go ahead and disregard this bottom side one. We don't need that. So for this, what we need to do is obviously mount that on top of here and then have enough threads for the engine mount to catch on to, but not too many threads because this thing does doesn't go over that. So we need to make sure we don't have too many, but we also need to keep the fat part of it because it slips right on here and has a really nice snug fit around our mount so it'll limit the amount of play. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is do a lot of measuring and then we'll cut this thing and we'll actually weld it directly onto this piece. That way the post will come off and then uh, hopefully the engine will have, yeah, the engine will have enough. Well, and then from there, this will go onto it That'll go onto there. Actually, on the bottom first, this will go on there. Make sure we have 100% purchase on our on our area. That'll go on there. That'll go on there, and then the engine, um, the stock engine mount will slide on top of that, and then you'll have the nut that goes on top of that and holds it all in there. So it's actually going to work really, really well. Uh, so now, lots of measuring, cutting, a couple tack welds, and then we'll uh, test place it. looks like we cut it correctly so uh, basically this gets welded onto here this gets welded onto here and then everything else gets placed on top and we also need to weld up all of these seams that are going to be hard for me to get at um, after we mount it into the car so it's time to just go ahead and weld the whole thing up and I'm going to use a mixture of TIG and MIG welding here I'll do MIG on most of it but I want to TIG weld this right here because I think I'll have a little bit more control that way I don't get anything that's going to block the placement of this washer right here
That is one really hot piece of metal. So you can see I went, and, went ahead and used the MIG welder and welded up these seams here. We TIG welded all the way around this and TIG welded this down on the corners. And then on the back side, MIG welded all the, uh, the seams. So that's ready to go. That's ready to be welded in the car. Um, so what happens for the car to be ready for it is uh, we need to get the engine in the exact right placement. It looks like the engine's a little too close to the body right now, but that is most likely because I think the body has slid forward a little bit. Uh, so the engine placement should be pretty good. Uh, I need to put some shims in here because right now it's just free floating away from the steering rack and I want some shims in there to make sure we don't accidentally hit it. And then once we're 100% sure where we want this thing, I need to take that triangular piece, center it based on the mount, center it, and uh, tack weld it into the frame. Then we'll bring in our engine mount shelf, put it in here, and tack weld that on as well. Basically what I want to do is actually have this side of the engine supported by the mount. Then we'll go over to the other engine side and we'll level it, make sure the engine gets completely level, and tack weld in the other side as well before we pull the engine out. Okay, we just finished welding in the uh, frame rail extension. So that's this piece down here, comes down, tacked it in here. It's just, everything's just tacked in right now. And then it's tacked in the back here. Then we placed our mount. It's a little bit hard to see. Let me grab the light. So those are our mount and it's tacked on the frame extension and the main frame as well. Uh, and then obviously it has the bushing, holds up the bushing and goes into the, uh, the stock engine mount. So this side of the engine is the, oh, also we have our uh, spacer here. This space is out. It's about three quarters of an inch to an inch. Spaces off the alternator away from the um, steering rack at the lowest point, which is good. So the next thing that we gotta do is actually put some weight on our newly tacked engine mount because the engine is sitting in here kind of tilted to the side a little bit because the load leveler uh, with the two lifting points that this engine has, the load level wasn't working very well. So now we're gonna go ahead and lift up the left side of this engine and get it 100% leveled out uh, before we can go ahead and build our second mount for over here. So we're gonna be putting some weight on our new engine mount. Hopefully none of those tack welds will pop. I think we'll be totally fine. All right, the engine has found its final resting place. Well, resting position. It's definitely gonna come in and out some more. But I'm, I, I don't think you guys know really how excited I am about this. Like this, it's how well this is coming together with, with getting the engine in here and seeing where it's gonna be and how it's gonna sit and how there's no real complications. I am so excited that we're gonna do this front mid-engine thing and make it work. That's so great. So the engine is completely level, but that doesn't really matter because if the frame isn't completely level, then having the engine level doesn't help you at all. So first thing I did was I used the level on the frame, uh, measuring those two spots. The frame is 100% level. That's just dumb luck because of the shop floor is level. So frames level, engines level within the frame. I also measured uh, level as far as the engine and the transmission running backwards to make sure that they're not like at a uh, like a real bad slant either way and they're looking good there too. So we're good to continue and start to try and weld up the engine mount so it lands exactly right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and weld in our frame rail extension. Do the same type of thing. I'm going to tack that in and then we'll start getting to work on our second um, engine mount. All right, I decided to do everything involving the, uh, the mount piece over here first before I move the welder over to the uh, other part of the car. So we're all welded up, top and bottom. Now we're coming over here. Hope this doesn't burn me. And we're gonna go ahead now and do the welding in of the bottom secondary rail and the tack welds of our mount. So to get our mount in there, it's gonna be a lot harder on this side because there's a little bit less room but uh, I'll make it happen. All 
All right, the second mount is tacked up there. That was a little bit more difficult because I was trying to get the uh, horizontal angling to match the other side, as well as I need to make sure that that's like really, really tightly squeezed up in there because the other side is sitting on its mount. So the weight of the engine is actually sitting on it, compressing a little bit. So I needed to have this side be a little bit high temporarily because once the engine weight is relieved from this side, it will squish down on its mount a little bit too. And I want it to land level, which is pretty much exactly what we have here. You can see it's a smidge high on that side which is right because once it sets down onto its mount, it'll lower it down and even out. So the next thing I gotta do is get access to these things to fully weld them up. So I need to pull the engine out. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the body all the way up as high as I can, lift the engine up as high as I can, slide it back so I can climb in there and get some space to start welding. Engine is out and we're ready to go ahead and fully weld up our mounts. So you can see the difference there. That's a one inch uh, longer mount over there than over here. Um, I had to add in a couple more tack welds over there, which are kind of brutal because I popped some of the tack welds when I was pulling the engine out. The stress of pulling up and down and up and down on the thing uh, popped a couple tack welds. So I'm probably gonna grab the flap disc and, and kind of grind down a little bit of, of what I can of those to make it as pretty as possible because we are trying to make things pretty with this. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and weld them both up fully top and bottom. All right, that's one down. The tack welds that were in there made it a little bit messier than it needed to be, but that's the reality of it. You gotta tack weld sometimes. It still looks pretty good. So switching over to the other side and I'll try and do better on that side. All right, we're completely welded up. Back sides of those things are welded up. Top sides of these things are welded up. That guy's welded up. So this one came out a little bit better than this one because the tack welds interrupted things. So that's something I'll learn from and just move forward on. Uh, it's kind of a bummer because this is a visible, well, no, this actually isn't visible because you have to imagine a fender is gonna come out to like right about here on this car because of the way that the frame's built versus the fender width. So you'll never see this anyways, really, but um, you know, I'm trying to have everything be as clean as I can, but I'm learning a lot very, very fast with this welder. Like, I mean, you could see this last, this line that I did here, I had to stop here and keep going, but overall, it's just a lot better than when I started on this welder. So I have very high hopes that I can keep making good looking welds. But the main thing though, is that they're strong and these are definitely gonna be nice, strong welds. So we have our engine mounts on here, let's go ahead and for no point other than to look at it, put the engine on its engine mounts. Oh man, this feels like such a freaking victory. I've been wanting to get these things welded up. I've been wanting to get this engine mounted for a long time. And uh, it's finally, finally done. We got plenty of clearance between the uh, alternator and that steering rack. We got plenty of room to send that steering rod from its point right here back towards the firewall and up. What we'll do is we'll build an extended, extended joint that'll run from there straight down to about here where it will go to a mount off of the frame rail. Um, and then it will go up through the firewall like it does on the OEM car. It'll actually probably be a pretty short little guy because we're not too far. Yeah, we are actually, we are kind of far off from stock. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm so excited. The car is sitting on its engine mounts. Look at that. 
All right, guys, that is where I'm going to wrap this one up. Now that we're back from Beamer Fest and all the road tripping, we're going to resume the standard schedule. So that means we're going to take the weekend off and we'll be back on Monday. You guys don't need to be watching YouTube on the weekend anyways. Get outside, work on your project cars, have fun, go race car driving. I don't know what you guys do, but have fun. Have some fun for me because I'll be doing the chores that I haven't done for the last two weeks. <laughs> this is a milestone moment for me. The engine is sitting in the car by itself. I got a car that has no body, no roll cage, Right now, I ain't even got no wheels, but I got an engine in it. So basically, I bolted an engine to two really re long rectangular pieces of metal, but, it, but I'm very proud of that. I will be honest with you guys, this build's been going a little bit slower than I've wanted to because I've been kind of like trying to wait around uh, for Eric to come weld some things up and some different things like that. And, uh, you know, I just got to keep continuing. This is not a. This is not a, anything negative about Eric or anything like that. But when with any of these builds, and I want everybody to know this, when you have any build or any project, and you're relying on somebody else, and they don't have as much availability and time as you, you're really only going to be able to work as fast as the slowest person. So that's something that I was trying and I was hoping to get around with this build, but it's just not the case. It's just not how it works. So sometimes you got to jump in there. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to do the thing that maybe you're a little nervous to and no, the welds did not turn out as well as if Eric would have done them, but they're done now and we can keep moving forward on the build. So it's a little give and take, right? And that's how, that's how life is. And I learned that a lot with computer software projects way back in the day. Uh, and that's why I ended up learning how to do a lot of the stuff I did myself. So the more you do it, the more you learn. First few times might be a little rough, but then you get better at it. But we are working out a way that hopefully we can have Eric in the shop a lot more, which is gonna be fantastic. And it'll keep the build going a little bit faster. So good things are happening in the background. That's it, I've wasted enough time of your night and mine, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Peace!